Welcome to the American Made and Paid Show, the home of free speech and independent thought. The big story is freedom of speech is really in trouble. The far left knows that at any time they can call for a sponsor boycott of anyone they despise. It is right here, right now, where you'll get your weekly dose of unfiltered truth. It's non-negotiable. Pre-existing conditions will be protected. This president has said this as a candidate. Insight. Very few people I know could have handled it. We can never, ever let this happen to another president again. An information that challenges the American way of life. Welcome, everybody, to the American Maiden Page Show. Zach here, back with another episode with Professor Dreg. i uh, got to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that just happened. Crazy stuff. Uh, Gilroy Garlic Festival. Guy shot and killed a few people. We can talk about gun control. Talk about this just in the context of what we know. Not really too sure on this. I just kind of heard about it last night. Reason why I bring it up is because Gilroy is a town not too far away from the Bay Area. We used to drive through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to drive through there all the time when you'd come back from L.A. or whatnot. And, uh, I mean, it's just really crazy, right? It's just, I don't know much about this, but um, what do you know of it? And maybe we can talk a little bit about gun control laws today because, uh, you know, whenever something like this goes down in California, people freak out over guns and all that. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's really interesting because, ah, uh, man, I mean, just the things that are going through my head, but let's just focus on the gun control aspect. Um yeah, the shooter himself, who, he, uh, you know, how he got his gun mm -hmm. was, I mean, it really comes down to, because his weapon was, was, uh, you, you know, gosh darn it, this has nothing to do with gun control or anything. It's just, here's the thing, when a person buys a gun, mm -hmm even if it's done legitimately, you have no, and I mean no control over what they do when they have it. You know, like for example, in New York, no magazine can be over 15, um, right. over 10. So they limit how many bullets you could have, 10. 10 bullets, blah, 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 blah. So, um, because the thing is like this, this was a legitimate terrorist attack. Ah, oh, geez, should I say this? But yeah, I'm going to say it anyway. Sure. So here's the thing. <laughs> because he's, it's called, you know, those homegrown terrorists. And, and I shouldn't really be talking about anything, but uh, like just for a little clue, he would be considered or classified as a homegrown terrorist, like radicalized through the internet. Uh, right. You know. Kind of like the one, kind of like what happened in New Zealand with the mosque shootings. Yeah, or even the one in, in San Bernardino. Sure. Those guys were homegrown. You know, they're just like, uh, they have a little bit of Muslim faith in them. Like, they're not real Muslims. They're American. Right. They're not like what anybody says. No, no, this guy, this guy is third generation. His grandparents live in Gilroy. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It, it's, uh, you know, even though in theory, mm -hmm. they're Muslim, but he's not, it's just like being a Jew. You know, like, is Savage really a Jewish person, or is he just a Jew because his grandparents or, or great-grandparents are Jewish? And But they don't sure, practice. Sure. So, anyway, for, for whatever reasons, uh, this guy got it up his butt. And, and you, know, you know why you know he's a local? Because of how he got in. So there's a way to get into the garlic Gilroy Garlic Festival for free. And you got to be a local to understand how to do it. Right. Because, you know, in the old days, you know, like when this kid was growing up, he probably heard his parents say, man, it used to be free. Now it's all commercialized and you got to spend a boatload of money to get in there. Well, what happened was he cut through the fence outside of the park to avoid the metal detectors because that's that's generally what. The, the reason why people like I okay so you know you're you're right about that number one but the way I know that that's true is because I have friends who used to just jump the fence for outside lands I used to do that too yeah no or even Great America like there's a part in Great America where you can walk yeah and there's a you know somebody because the thing is like this kid didn't cut it himself that 
Okay, so, because I don't want to, I hate to give, like, directions how it's done. <laughs> but there is a spot, and this is the funny thing, too, because they actually have dogs. So, in order to throw off the, any sense that a dog might pick up, there's a little creek area where you could honestly cross <laughs> and then go through the hole. <laughs> But anyway, but it's just one of those weird, like, you got to be a local. So, you know, is it a terrorist attack? Eh, like, was he radicalized? Eh, but the, the main thing is to focus on the gun that he had. And uh, he was able to shoot, you know, a ton of, not a ton, but like 15 people, 14 people, maybe 20 at the most. And he did it really quick because the cops, they responded very quickly because at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, they hire police to do security. It's, it's, that's what they do in the South Bay. So Gilroy is part of the Bay Area, and the South Bay, whether it's the Sheriff's Department, San Jose PD, Gilroy PD, uh, it doesn't matter, Sunnyvale, whatever city, they allow their police officers to also, I don't want to say moonlight, but they get a second job as security. But they're still police officers. So, you know, like Gilroy, would, the, whoever's organizing the Gilroy Garlic Festival would have to pay the, the local police, you know, like time and a half. Mm -hmm. But then they end up paying the city like a whole bunch of money. But either way, so these cops do it. Cops took them down. It was like within seconds. You know, there was like active shooter. And, you know, they responded appropriately, unlike what happened in Florida. You know, when that cop was just frozen and just ran away. Now, these cops, they engaged, killed him within seconds. But the problem with everybody freaking out is how many people he shot so quickly. And the thing was, it wasn't, you know, he modified the gun. You know what I mean? So if you modify a gun, and that's how it's done. You know what I mean? Like, all our gun control laws, all, everything is in effect. It works well. And whatever kind of gun this guy was using, it was modified because he did it himself. Any law, any rules mm -hmm. modified, you know, to sell guns, it wouldn't have stopped this kid. Everybody does this. They do it with their cars. They do it with their stereos. It's just what people do. They do so it with he got his he got his weapon from Nevada. Pretty pretty you know easy to do that to go to California. But what's the what's the main thing here i mean people aren't sure of the motive it's just is it random i mean uh, well i mean that's why i hate to give out information before it's but you know you'll see you guys will see it he, the kid was radicalized he, he just was you know he was just uh just one of those kids that you know and, and it goes back to like for me this is more of an issue of parenting versus gun control well, the guy, so this is, this is the only real witness kind of um, account of people who, or I guess we're in. Oh, no, there was a lot of witnesses, a lot of video accounts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> there yeah. is, there is. But a guy said he was really angry, just like an angry kid. And this is kind of related to what we always talk about. Yeah, no, but that's why it goes back to parent. He was radicalized. And, you know, and, and the thing is, God, you hate to, because the, the one, okay, so. The, that's why I don't really well i mean the kid is dead but uh but the evidence will show through his internet searches and everything else what he was watching and you can get a sense but because i know some of these people they're going to try to make it sound like he you know like he was like a trump supporter and and he hated you know blah 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 you know just just make it really you know you know uh, like because i know trying to spin it you, you know what i mean because that's why i was surprised they even let this guy out i mean his name out you, you know because everybody knew he was a muslim uh or i shouldn't say a muslim he was iranian or or iraqi whatever he's from or from the middle his 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 family he's italian heritage. and iranian is, is his background but i i see that's the thing is i don't want to focus on on race too much because that's not the point i really yeah, don't think that really I, I, here's the thing even if this guy had been some like mexican dude or whatever i'm not going to be the first to jump on the race wagon i mean it could have been a white guy a black guy any guy he, that's he why i'm not he was a white dude so, but that's the thing, because see, people don't re realize, see, because, okay, so here's the thing. They were trying to spin it that he was like a Trump angry MAGA hat dude because he's white. 
because he's a white Muslim. That's what he is. He's a white guy. But then he was right. That's why, you know, when I was reading it yesterday, I was like, I wonder how the media is covering it. Because, again, like we have uh, because for what we do, this was automatically considered a terrorist because it is the terrorist attack. It doesn't matter if it's Muslim, whatever, but whenever these are mass shootings happen, they're considered by the government as a terrorist attack. But what type of terrorist is it? Mm -hmm. So this guy was technically white, but he's also a Muslim. Like most Muslims are Muslims are their original Aryans. Why was he so pissed off? Because I hate to say this, but he was shooting kids. You know what I mean? Like how many kids were shot? A six-year-old, a 10-year-old, I think three people. 13-year-old, like he shot, like half the people he shot were kids. And, uh, and, and so the guy was obviously twisted. Uh, but no, but everybody was young. Like it was surprising. Like everybody was young. That was, I, I don't want to say everybody, but like, I think the oldest person who was shot was like in his 30s. So he was going after young people in particular. I, you know, I mean, who knows? Like, in all honesty, who knows? And, um, but the way they're trying to spin it, which I don't want people to think, this, this guy was not like those Trump supporters or anything like that. He wasn't, because that's how they're trying to say, oh, he was in camouflage and gear. And you know what I mean? Like one of those types of dudes, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like those off the grid guys, <laughs> you know, they're camouflage and hating society. No, 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 this guy was, was, uh, and we knew automatic, not we knew automatically, but I think within a half hour, they're had identified as a, as a Muslim. And uh, from what we were told that he was radicalized, you know, watching crap on YouTube and things like that. So I don't want to say he was a leftist because we don't know, but he was just one of those crazy ass leftists, blah, 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 blah. He wasn't a Trump supporter. You know, he was just, just, uh, just like what you said, like he was angry. He was just an angry kid. And this has everything to do with parenting and nothing to do with terrorism or mm -hmm. religion. It really right. doesn't. And it goes back to this kid lived on his computer. And, and that's what happens. I, I, I hate to say things like this, but boys, because then they and oh, girls are meant to do this. Well, yeah, technically. I mean, men are, aren't made to stay home. You know, they're not made to just, you know, and I know I kind of do it myself, but. <laughs> You're right, though. I'm starting to go a little crazy. If I, I'm taking a couple of days off this week from my current role. I actually going to L.A. on Wednesday. I'll tell you more about that later. But the thing is, you're right. You know, you if you sit around at home as a guy and you uh, play video games or you watch porn or you do any of that, nothing that you do at home actually is going to be remotely productive long term. You have yeah. to have balance, you know. Men, like, guys will go crazy. If, I mean, anyone will go crazy if you're at home for too long, especially if you spend too much time on the internet. Like, we all know that we shouldn't, but it's... No, no but see, but that's makes my job. crazy, yeah. See, but that's exactly my job. My job is to analyze the function of everybody's behavior. This, I mean, come on. How did anybody not see this going to happen? Like, how do you know? Like, how do you not know this is going to happen? Boys are meant to go play outside, be physical, not with yourself, like you described earlier, but physical, like you got to play sports. You got to play some sort of contact sport. With more you know, boys. you're right because you've told me this and we've talked like for a lot of these frustrated kids, if they're angry or not, again, now, now for everyone who's listening, I just want to say now we're just speculating here. We're just projecting. We don't know the motive. I'm not even talking yeah, yeah, about the shooter. Yeah, exactly. We're we now just talking about parenting and, and kids. <laughs> or anything like that yeah yeah we're just talking about parenting and kids now um what i was saying was um yeah like usually for particularly troubled kids the big goal here is to usually get them to go do something like play a sport or go wrestle or sign them up for something that that Chip allows ball. them to use Cause here's, well because what happens is for a lot of people who are troubled teens right people usually think ah well discipline him and give him medication nah he just needs to go outside more the fresh air will quite literally make him. No, but you know, like this kid could have easily built a treehouse. See, because here's the thing. Even if it's not like playing sports, he could still like build something. 
work on a car, like a mechanic, anything mechanical. He could have used his hands, go plant uh, uh, something, you right. know, like uh, learn how to, you know, grow some fruits or something, like something physically demanding. And I swear to God, this kid would be alive today because obviously he's dead. You know, um, well, I guess it's not obvious, but trust me, down here, if something happens, I guarantee you they're going down and they're going down quick. This ain't Florida. Like how everybody's trained in the South Bay. I'm not kidding you. They don't mess around. Like there's a unit in San Jose called the Merge Unit. And uh, they have authority to go even in, in, in like their jurisdictions, the entire Bay Area. So if they find something wrong and they have to go to San Francisco to do it, to go get their guy, they'll do it. And, and everybody backs up, hey, you're the San Jose cops, you can't do it. No, trust me. The cops here are trained, well, not in San Francisco, but in the South Bay, San Jose, Gilroy, you know, uh, those cities, their police officers are not your ordinary police officers. They don't mess around. And so, you know, hats off to those guys, you know, you know, uh, neutralizing that situation, you know, really quick, you know, and, and you know, what's funny. I, I saw this one video <laughs> because you got to find the uh, levity um, in everything, but there was like a black family. <laughs> I swear to God, everybody was panicking except for them. They're like, yeah, it's just some gun shooting. <laughs> they were just walking, really, really, like, they were, like, meandering just out the door, like, just not even panicking. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? what are you laughing about, though? Because there was, like, a black family just totally chilling, just walking slow. Everybody else was running, kind of going all crazy, and this black family just all oh, just another shooter, just, you know, just to We shoot. were aware of this, so we're just going <laughs> to... Pretty, I mean, that's I mean, everybody's like trying to scram and get out of the space, and they're taking their time. Yeah, not them. They were just walking, like oh, blah blah blah, like you know, just man, like they were just literally walking. It was fun, and I was like, oh my god. But you know, there was like a joke, like you know, in a terrorist attack or anything like that, black people are safe <laughs> because the shooter ain't gonna shoot them <laughs> or make them hostage or anything like that because you know there's no point you don't get your point across by killing a black dude because we're at the we're at the bottom of the totem pole so you know who's gonna save us no one's gonna pay a ransom for us <laughs> or anything like that it's a bad joke but it's funny for us no no i know what you're saying but um yeah <laughs> i mean i think the big debate here just to take it back to the shooter is not so much about you know, the, the, I know it's horrific. People died, you know, always when there's a shooter, it's, it's going to be an uprising for a little while, but the fact that he purchased a gun and he was under the legal age, like this kid's like, he was like 19. Yeah. And that was the big thing. No, but, but we still don't know. Like, you know, he could have got a fake ID. There's a million things that could have had, you know, you know, like, look, I had a fake ID. I had a legitimate real ID, but I went to the DMV and I just lied about who I was, lied about my age, gave him my thumbprint, and guess what? Boom, real ID, but it's fake. And, uh, you know, and it happens all the time. So it's, it's like, I don't even want to say he got it illegally because he did it. He d took all the required steps to get it done. And that's the thing. You could always cheat the law. You always can. So, you know, no matter what people do, just like, the economy mm -hmm. the government cannot and never will be able to control the economy just like man can never control and it goes back to romans man can never control other people's behaviors or their thoughts if somebody has it in their in them to do something bad nobody can stop them yeah and it's just the reality and instead of trying and this is like because in theory this is my job this is my expertise how can i stop a guy from doing this i'm going to analyze his behaviors and i'm going to predict this and predict that blah 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 blah, blah. and you know what can never be done mm -hmm. not just i'm i'm not saying this just because i'm bad at my job but if god can't do it then how, what makes anyone think I could do? It's in Romans. He doesn't control that area. 
that carnal mind stuff is that's like the legitimate wild wild west god has no dominion over that he doesn't you know he's given us that option for us to do it for ourselves mm -hmm. so it, it's and that's why parenting is so important it's not about laws laws you can change the laws all you want and it's going to happen you know like this kid he went you know i mean who knows how he did it maybe his friend did it maybe i don't even want to speculate because uh, i know they're saying oh he bought it illegally in nevada it's like no he, he was able to do it legally but he just had a lot look you could get fake ids it's not that hard you know what i mean i could go anywhere in any state and get a fake id under assumed name it's easy mm -hmm. why because of illegal immigration illegal immigration has made it much, much more easier to get a real fake ID from the government. Right. That's how you do it. And this kid isn't stupid. So that's why I don't want to give away too much because we shouldn't be giving out information on how to do things illegally. <laughs> no, because it's true. It's, it's like, you know, but just rest assured, this kid did it the right way. And nobody could have stopped him from doing what he was going to do. Nobody. These are just one of those things. It's like, why did it happen? Well, he has free will. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, ultimately it's bad parenting. And, and that's the truth. It's like this kid, I mean, gosh darn, I, I, I hate to give out information, but look, I'll say it like this. Every child should not have a cell phone. They should have very, very restricted access to a computer and the internet, that, that's just poison. I don't care what it is. Any kid watching that stuff or on the internet watching TV shows, that's bad parenting. That's just the parents saying, I give up. They don't care and that's really bad. This is what happens, Gilroy happens. All of these things happen because of bad parenting. Nothing more, nothing less. If you want a good society that's gonna be you know, healthy, nonviolent, you got to spend time as a family. Like, dude, when was the last time this guy kid ever went fishing? You know, like they can go fishing down over there. Seriously, without giving too much information. But honestly, did this kid ever go fishing? And that's the point. I guarantee you this. If he would have had a normal life like any other, you know, like um, all you got to do is look at yourself like, you know, when you talk about your father on this program, you know, you guys did things, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, you know, but my life was screwed up because I never did shit with my parents. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I didn't do anything with my dad. My dad was deported. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Really? I didn't. Yeah, my dad was deported when we were little. And uh, so we lived in Mexico for a bit. But then uh, you know, my mom decided to come back to the States because Mexico sucked. Dude, I was, I, we were sleeping. Not, me and my brother had to sleep in a station when I get out in the street. <laughs> and, uh, oh, man, it was madness down in Mexico. But either way, so my dad couldn't get back in the country, so we came. Why do you think my life was so fucked up? I mean, uh, <laughs> messed up. No parents. Yeah, stop, don't uh, curse, so man. My, <laughs> yeah, so my mom came back with the family, and my dad had to stay behind. And, uh, you know, so it's just one of those messed up things. But that's the point. With no dad, come on, you're going to have a messed up life. Mm. And, you know, I'm not saying this kid didn't have his parents, but come on. What's the difference of growing up like me and growing up on the Internet? You know what I mean? And that's what happened to this. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't even say that, but that's what I'm saying. It's like the thing is like this. You got as a parent, you have to spend time with your children, you know, especially your boys, because if you don't take your kids outside to play, even if you don't play with them, just watch them play. You don't have to participate because you're not a kid. You don't need to go running around the jungle gym, climbing, climbing up those geometric domes and stuff. Just watch them play. Just and then you know they come back and you know, hey that kid pushed me or you know this kid I fell down. You know what I mean? They're crying or whatever. Like the dad just needs to be there. You know what I mean? And, and that's that's just what I hate to say this, but anyway, because this kid could have. I mean, who knows? He could have been schizophrenic or whatever. But t time will tell. Uh, but even if he was schizophrenic, 
a good parent would have been able to, you know what I mean? But because uh, because the thing is, we can't really talk about what mm-hmm. we know. Um, it's just how it is. So I'm trying to go around things and how to make it appropriate without getting in trouble. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, all thought like just trust me on this. Fathers need to be involved with their kids. I mean, I hate to say this, and not just because I'm the dad or I'm a male, but even if I was a female, uh, and a lot of female professionals who do what I do, they recognize it too. It's more important to have the father in the home than it is the mother. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's sad to say, but, you know, when kids, uh, I mean, but you hate to look at this from an evidence you know, like, oh, look, the stats and the facts and this and that, because there's a lot of bad men. You know, they molest their kids, they're drunk or whatever. So I'm not saying there's no bad men, but single fathers tend to do better than single mothers. And, it, and granted, there's way more single mothers that are raising children. So obviously the stats are, you know, there's way, you know, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's, if, if like, if there was as many single fathers raising, you know, children, like there are single mothers, maybe the numbers might be higher. Cause maybe a lot of these guys will be drunks and alcoholics or, you know, molesters, you know, who knows? Yeah. And I think that, I, I think that the more and more I think about this, you know, we can always, we can always just say that everything is going to come down to, to the parenting style. I mean, I, I hate to say this, but like, even, even if, if things start off kind of benign, like, so I know this girl, I won't name her name. I think I am like kind of related to her and she, she does pole dancing now. Right. But, yeah. but, but the thing is it's completely benign. She's not, you know, at a gentleman's club or whatever, getting tips or anything, but I have a, oh, I have a weird feeling that, in weird in, in some way there's a justification of doing that because of of a i don't know a daddy issue or something you know and i mean we don't have to get into you know you know fatherless specifics. homes i know huh you don't need to get into specifics but but what i'm trying to say is like from, from me knowing her like her parents divorced and her dad was always like working and all that kind of stuff so this is not even really like a bad you know drug addicted or anything yeah. kind of like that family it's just exactly. it's just but what what i'm also trying to point at is absenteeism is like even benign neglect is like your kid will just kind of go like here's the thing my, my parents you know what they did we we weren't allowed to have computers in our rooms for for a while you know like my parents were like no video games and then eventually we protested and then when we were in ninth grade we finally got video games but i wasn't a kid that grew up on video games my parents and honestly when i have kids man dude you ain't getting no video games forget it go outside or learn an instrument i mean i'm glad i my parents are like learn an instrument because now i'm you know you're the cool kid now if you can play an instrument, <laughs> yeah. that's what's up yeah like i can play so but here's the thing it's like if i started playing guitar now I wouldn't be able to do it because it's just when you get older, life catches up with you. When you're like 12 and all you do is go to school and you've got like 10 hours a day on your hands, don't play video games. Go learn an instrument. Like go learn a language. Go uh, because you're fine. You're not paying rent. You ain't got to do anything. It's the perfect time to just like develop new skills. And I think that I wish every kid knew that. And the thing is, I didn't quite know that. But But at the same time, it's a way to also alleviate any kind of uh i think long-term issues like for example i had i had issues with my parents too like my dad had anger issues but i think they were worked out in a healthy way because of the freedom that i was given and certain restrictions that were placed on me like parents need to actually firm up like they need to spank their kids and they need to be like you can't watch certain movies like you just i'm not gonna buy you call of duty because it's killing people you know like and I sound like some old grandma, like, don't play that war video game. It sounds violent, but it's true. Like, you know, I, we talked about this on a previous episode, but I don't know how much you know, but when kids play video games these days, it's so competitive and it's so adrenaline fueled that when they lose the anger that comes out, when this guy said he was an angry, angry person, the anger that comes out of kids playing video games now is unprecedented. I'm talking like 
you've seen I don't know if you've seen compilations on the internet whatever kids will throw stuff punch holes through their TVs because it gets really frustrating but it God, also I'm retarded <laughs> Dude, that's retarded my god like seriously it's just a freaking video game i know i know but when you're in it like i get it i get it because i've used to be that kid for a short time and then i i don't play video games anymore so it's just you know the only video game that i would let my kid play was um um we sports (laughs) and and the sims you know the building sure sims (laughs) yeah i'm not kidding that was it and then hello kitty game you know, like the only videos she can watch, uh, to like her whole entire life were like Disney films, the Hello Kitty videos, like the old ones where they teach you about manners and things like that, and uh, and Avatar, uh-huh. <laughs> the, the Last Airbender. That was it. Nothing else her entire life until she turned eighteen. <laughs> yeah, so we read books a lot. I read to her almost every night. Even as even when she was uh, an older kid, like we would read like one of Anne Rand's book, and then we read like Inkheart, Braveheart, you know, whatever those books. I don't I don't know if you even read Inkheart, but uh, you know, I'm not yeah, yeah, I used to read read Inkheart. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, no, I'm not kidding. Like we would read that every day, not Inkheart every day, but just books every day, and just you know, instead of going to the movies, oh, like Harry Potter, you know what I mean. And that was uh, she can watch Harry Potter too, but uh, other than that, I mean, I controlled every single aspect of, of that because, dude, come on, are you kidding me? It's insane. Like when you really think about, ah, uh, uh, gosh, because you know, like people don't understand how bad of a parent you are when you just let your kids play video games all day just because they're in their room. They're thinking they're being Oh, I'm a good parent. My kid, he's up in his room all day. You can't do that. You cannot isolate a person all day. That's why in prison, isolation is considered cruel and unusual punishment. You can't just isolate one person and throw them in the dungeon, you know, in a prison, like, because people need human contact. You know, I mean, granted, in prison, it's with a bunch of bad people, but... You know, but uh, but even in prison, they recognize isolation is not good. Mm-hmm. You know, you, people tend to commit suicide and, and just go insane. You know, it's just how it works. But um, imagine a kid doing that his whole entire life, just isolating himself with those. See, look, how can you not know? I mean, to me, it's just absurd, but it, it's what you're saying is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. If you're teaching a kid, he's isolated, he's playing these violent video games. I mean, I've never seen Call of Duty, but I'm assuming that these are realistic video games. Not like video games like the one like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, where it's it's clearly fantasy based, right? But Call of Duty is violent as all heck, man. We're talking like... I will say this. We've talked about this on previous episodes, but I feel the need to reiterate it. I have never seen my younger brother get so angry before in my entire life. You know, if the Wi-Fi would trip out for a second and he'd lose the match. (laughs) That's funny. I don't know why. But to me, I see stuff like that is funny to me. So I hate to sound like one of those old farts that are just like, stop playing those video games. You'll turn into a crazy, like, shooter, killer. I don't know, man. Like, video games are getting very, very realistic nowadays, and it fosters a lot of anger in people. But see, but that remember we talked about that before. People become desensitized. Yeah. And, and we're talking about that with police violence and police brutality or the use of excess, uh, excessive force. Most people cannot handle seeing death. They can't. Mm-hmm. That's why cops commit suicide, because we are forcing them to kill people for no reason. And when a police officer who's, you know, look, cops are good-hearted people. They really are. They, they, they go in there thinking they're going to do a lot of good. They get in a situation where they have to shoot somebody. And when they look back, they go, fuck, I could have done things differently. Mm-hmm. And that eats at them for the rest of their lives because they have committed the ultimate sin, 
well, I don't know if it's the ultimate sin, but shit, man, taking a life ain't easy. And uh, the only type of person who could honestly kill and have no remorse is a twisted, twisted mind. And that's what these video games are doing. And, and you know, my weakness is I don't know enough about current pop culture or current events because I isolate, because, dude, I, I don't watch horror movies. I don't, I never have. Yeah, I don't either. Um, it's just it's just too much. And so I'm not going to get into realistic video games. But if that's really happening, oh, dude, we are raising an army of killers. Because, come on, you know what I mean? If it's really that realistic, because some, like, there was a joke about, um, it's on the Big Bang Theory about Grand Theft Auto, how... Yeah, people used to think that my dad, I think at one point said that it was, like, really violent. It made kids, like, desensitized to just, like, committing crimes and shooting. Yeah, and, and degrading like, women, like, because uh, I, I think Sheldon's character said something like, Oh, I don't do that. I, I, I always give her like a tip and don't run her over or something like that. I guess that's part of the video game is you got to run over the prostitute and take her money. Or yeah, something it, like that. You know, now that I think about it, Grand Theft Auto is an evil, evil game. It's yeah! just, it, it, it plays to your darkest fantasies of, of being a crime boss, a gangster, running prostitutes, stealing cars and shooting people. Like it's just like all the things that in the real world you can't but it's do. It's cartoonish, I thought. I mean, uh, yeah, it's in third person, and you run around. Hey, don't get me no, wrong. I've never I've, seen it, so I've never seen the game. I've never oh. seen it, so I would have no idea. It's just it's third person. Guy runs around the city, and uh, you know, Grand that type of thing. Auto. Yeah, but I will say this: it's it's not. Um, yeah, it's it's just it. I mean, it's it's not. I guess I you know, kids. I think there's a lot of reasonable kids that play these games. I played them too, and yeah, you're obviously not going to run around doing that. That's the justification for video games, right? No, but no, 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 no. But here's the difference. I got no. You really think about this. Yeah. The difference from you is you only play it for an hour. There are children playing this eight to ten hours a day. That's a real problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. Without giving up too much. Okay, let me put it to you like this. I will bet anybody a million dollars that this kid was in that room about 12 to 16 hours a day. Just bunkered in that little room of his. I guarantee you this. Million bucks. <laughs> this kid was isolated for a decade. Okay. The stuff that's in this kid's mind, holy crap. I'm not kidding you. It's a nightmare. But at the same time, that's how you battle Kaliza Kid. He's, uh, you know, anyway, but because I've seen it before, you know, this has nothing to do with Gilroy. But in other situations where uh, people become radical, like in the Colorado, <laughs> you know, these people were just constantly on the internet. They were, Shit, man, this one person was even looking for older men, like in their 30s. You know what I mean? 30s, 40s. Mm -hmm. And anyway, somehow, some way, she met up with some kind of, you know, imam. Right. Oh, <laughs> know. man. No, but she found an imam, dude. And, yeah, they convinced her to move. And, uh, and, and that's what, you know, I hate to say things like that, but that actually happens in real life. And, and it ha there's a pattern of things like that happening. You isolate it yourself. There's a big difference from one hour and 12 hours. Can you imagine that? Like, that's more than you sleep. When you sleep, that's when your brain recharges and, and, and I don't know, like something, I don't want to see something special happens when you're dreaming, but the intellectual mind, mm -hmm. something's happening in your dreams. And, I don't, I think now, I don't even think it's, it has anything to do with like science or biology. I just think your dreams tell you something like there's something about your dreams. Oh no. Because well, man, my it, dreams have been. Yeah. And to take it back to this like shooter guy, right? Yeah. And we get to sit here and debate, you know, motive and all that kind of stuff and gun control, but you're right. I like that today's spin. We're talking about it in the form of parenting. Now, again, I don't know much about this individual. It looks like there's not a lot of resources out there but it makes me think right 
because this kid is 19 years old, 19 years old. You know, he's kind of like homegrown, angry kid. Makes me think like, I mean, where's the anger usually stemming from? I mean, I mean what could you possibly be so angry about at 19? You, you, did, you haven't, it's not like your wife divorced you or anything, right? And, and you know, that's the thing, right? You would think that, you know, some men go crazy over divorce because it's mm-hmm. nuts. But okay, parenting, one thing maybe video games and i always say video games because i have seen anger like no other unless i've seen like for kids like the only time a kid gets that angry is over a video game it's not even if someone takes your stuff in real life can you imagine that you're less likely from what i've seen to go nuts when someone takes your money in real life than losing over a video game think about this in a lot of training like in aviation mm-hmm. or, you know, driving a vehicle, I don't know, whatever. The video training, because, you know, they have training, it's like a video game, it's like playing a video game. It's only three or four hours a day for you to become an expert or whatever it is that you're doing. Imagine this kid playing 12 hours a day, Call of Duty or whatever video game that is realistic and, and killing people with a gun. Yeah. Like his Call of Duty would be like a gun game. Yeah, it's first person shooter, you know. No, but think about that. If you if if a pilot has to train in those machines, you know, like yeah, simulators, hours, right. four hours, and he's an expert in flying a real plane, imagine your expertise in killing somebody. <laughs> the same type of simulations for twelve hours a day, not even sleeping, just Video game, video, you know what I mean? And that's insane. And, and I'm telling you, this really is about parenting and not about gun, like this whole thing. Oh, the law, the law, the law is not going to do anything for you. The law doesn't prevent anything. Mm-hmm. This doesn't. How many laws are there for vaccinations? <laughs> you can't stop diseases. They keep coming. Right. And it's just how it goes. So the best thing, and it always goes down to parenting. You tell your kid to wash their hands. <laughs> wash their hands. And that's how you, that's the best prevention of getting sick. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your nose. Don't touch your mouth. That's, that's just how you parent the kids. That's how you prevent illness. All the mandates of the government says, oh, this, you know what? It's not going to help. Same thing with gun control. All of these laws to stop gun, you know, people, bad people from getting guns, it's never going to happen. A bad person's going to do what bad people do. And I'll give you an example. Um, growing up, you know, I was raised without a father and whatnot. So what did we do? There was no video games. I mean, we had Atari and, and television. <laughs> That's how, those are the video games of our time. Um, uh, so anyway, we didn't have any of that. So what did we do? We literally built bombs, like pipe bombs, all kinds of stuff. We, that's what we do. We would just build bombs. Dry ice bombs, this bomb, that and, bomb. Uh, I am not kidding you. We just did crazy things because that's what we did with no guidance. Mm-hmm. But we were still physical. But, you know, we just used our minds to do sinister things. But that's what you're supposed to do as a dad. As a dad, you're supposed to guide your kids into doing physical things, physical activities. You don't send them off like if they're being punished. You know, like in the old days, mm-hmm. you know, time, well, time out is a joke. But uh, they used to call it the silent treatment. <laughs> you know, like if you give a kid the silent treatment, you just ignore them. Like they don't exist. You know, go to your room, give you the silent treatment for like an hour, and then that. Like, that was a punishment in the old days. The silent treatment. Now, go to your room as a reward to go play. Your, that's insane. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, in the old days, I, I, I still don't get it. I don't get how this became good parenting. Oh, you know, my kid has so much. He has this video game, this iPhone, that iPhone, everything brand new, this and that. I'm thinking, what the hell? Like, what happened? 
what happened to giving your kid like a piece of wood and a couple of screwdrivers? You know what I mean? Go build this thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I want to go play basketball. Go get yourself the hoop and go put it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you wanted something, you had to go do it yourself. It doesn't make any sense. Like, how is this considered parenting? You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, and, and look, like I said before, when we see this in the media, it's going to be all kinds of stuff. You know, this guy should be blamed. This guy should be blamed. You know, Trump is bad. Trump is this. Trump is that. And it has nothing to do with Trump. It has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with the laws. It has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. But it has everything to do with a couple of parents not paying attention. Because, you know, their excuse is, well, you know, it's hot outside. People don't want to play. Because in Gilroy, you know it does get like in the hundreds. <laughs> Gilroy, and it's a crazy thing, but it's like Sacramento super hot, Gilroy super hot. Yeah. You know, so, and that's going to be their excuse because it's hot air conditions. Like, nah, man, you know, even if it's hot, you still got to go outside. You know, there's, you know, go to the swimming pool. The, uh, maybe Gilroy Gardens, they got a ride where you can play in the water. I don't know, but this kid was just the only fault is the parents, even though he's an adult and um, without knowing too much, I already know there's bad parenting. This kid was radicalized because why bad parenting, bad parenting. And even if he was radicalized by some, well, I don't want to get go in there, but mm -hmm. the thing is like this. I will say this. There is a big connection between MS-13 gangs, um, like, you know, they call them Sodanios. But the Sodanio gangs have a very strong connection with the Muslim terrorists. They just do. And you can see a lot of Cholos, you know, with no sense, being ISIS fighters in the Middle East. I'm not kidding you. You see these cholos like shooting on American soldiers in Syria, or in so that's the thing. Like people don't get it. It's like when they think of radicalization of a teen, all they think about is some imam, you know, dressed in some holy garb or clothes, you know, telling these guys things about the Quran. But that's not how it works. You get a bunch of angry kids that know how to kill, and um, you know, and they got that gang banging mentality, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna pay them to go kill the enemy. Who's the enemy? Well, the cops, the government, Trump, this, that, because you know, you know, just a bunch of angry dudes. It's easy to radicalize a bunch of kids, and so you know what I mean. So, like, nobody honestly knows except for the people who have access to his computer and everything else. And, um, but it wasn't some Trump supporter, you know, crazy KKK guy, you know, yeah. just, you know, it wasn't that because that I can say with, with a hundred percent certainty. And the other one thing I can say with a hundred percent certainty was bad parenting. It's just how it works. This kid shouldn't have been isolated. He shouldn't have. And, um, you know, the parents were bad for it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just how it goes. And they should have, you know, because the thing is like this, because I like all of the excuses are running through my head because we're all different. Everybody has different abilities and that's okay. That's why they need a dad to help them build something or even a mom. But you know, most moms can't build a tree house, <laughs> you know, but it's the truth. It, it's just a reality. So it's hard to do like, I don't know, like to me, those video games, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's cowardly. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's, um, you know, that's feminizing men because I don't care how violent it is, but you got to, you know, even like you said earlier, wrestling, like, you know, kids wrestle. There's a reason why we do contact sports because it's one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. Right. As they say, mono y mono. These video games are teaching you how to be a female body part. That's what they, that's what that is. That you got to be a real big one to do something like that. That's that's you know you don't be shooting people. 
You know what I mean? Because I remember this one kid, you know, he was, uh, you know, he, he was he was in prison for like armed robbery. He, he stole a car and they just had it in them to go ahead and just rob him. And then he even told me, he was like, dude, they're, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that they didn't fight back because we would have shot them. Yeah. And I told him, I said, dude, what's wrong with you? You're a big dude. Are you telling me you can't beat somebody up? And he goes, no, we never learned how to fight, so we shoot everybody. That's how it's done these days. And I'm thinking, that's insane. I would love to be your size and just beat the crap out of everybody. And you're going to tell me a gun is your first option? Where's the joy in that? Anybody can shoot anybody. That's the point of a gun. Anybody can do it. Doesn't make you more. It, it literally. That's what cowards do. And you know, maybe my street thinking is wrong, but but it's the truth. Only a coward would use a gun or a knife. I said, you know, you got to use your hands. You know, mano y mano. That's how you do things. I like. I honestly don't understand these kids. I really don't like. It's like, where is the joy? Where is where is like? How do you know? Like how good you are. None of these kids have a curiosity at how good they are. Just yeah. mass shooting in a video game doesn't tell you how good you are. It doesn't. And that's the thing I'm, I'm telling you. Something is wrong with, I mean, obviously something's wrong, but, and I think I did pretty good the whole episode without talking about religion. <laughs> but this is why we need Christianity. I swear to you, every answer we have like to every problem we have in our society is literally based and covered in Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's covered. All our answers are literally covered in very simple, but hard to do <laughs> instructions. And it goes back to the first commandment, second commandment, understanding Romans. Right. It, like it's literally, I mean, you don't have to even read the whole entire thing to get all the answers. If this kid would have had somebody teach him about, you know, the whole concept about learning how to fish mm -hmm. versus being given a fish. See, this kid was given every fish ever in his whole life. He never learned how to do anything. He couldn't do for himself. Couldn't. And I'm telling you, I mean, you hate to say things like this because I'm giving up too much information, but I guarantee you this, just based on from what I've known and what we were told, everything can easily have been avoided just with a, a good Christian father. He doesn't even need a biological father. Just a good dude that understands Christian principles, he mm. would have been solid. So I, that's I how you that. parent your kid. That's yeah. how you parent your kid. You got to do it. Because without it, you become maniacal. Like, I'm a maniacal dude. Like, I was, you know, sinister. I was a sinister kid. Mm -hmm. Smart. I had ethics, moral. I never killed anybody. But they might as well have been dead, from what I've been told. Some of these guys were really messed up in the head for what <laughs> we used to do. And uh, But that's why you need Christian principles, because that's how you avoid things. How do you control the carnal mind? You can't unless you have the, the, the philosophies and the beliefs and understandings that Jesus is trying to teach you. That's the only thing. that Look, it's been working for some odd, like 2,000-something years. Mm-hmm. Just this past, you know, 50 years has been out of control. <laughs> no, seriously, you know, and technically it's only been like the past 15 years is out of control. Right, right. And this is like the furthest we've gone away from Christianity. And look how fast we're falling as a society. The further away we go, the faster we fall. It's insane. But I probably keep telling you, the only solution is, our leaders have to become Christians again, like real Christians, not like that dude from like the 700 club or, <laughs> or what's that other guy? Newt Gingrich, people like that. No, none like that. No more yeah. violence, no more war. No, we you're absolutely right though. I mean, that, that, that's the case. We do have to wrap this up cause I got to take a call in a second here, but, um, yeah, man. Um, uh, any any kind of real quick thoughts before we wrap this up? Because I gotta. No no no, those are my final thoughts. Because I sound like an idiot, but. Well, no, you didn't. You didn't. But the thing is, I think I agree with you. You know, we don't have we we can keep tying it back to Christianity as much as we want. It's it's the main basis, and it explains everything. I think that 
I wanted to take this in a, a direction where we're talking about this guy, but the aspect of, of him is due to poor parenting, you know, not through anything else. It's really in the parenting aspect. So I think we should talk a little bit more so about this, just because I think when it comes to developing individuals and all that, I mean, it's number one, you know, you could send, you could homeschool your kids and not even be a good teacher and they'll probably be all right. You know, as long as you got the, the family unit in place. So no, no, but think about this, consider his vaping issues, consider that he may or may not have been smoking weed. That too. You know what I mean? Like there's so many factors that yeah. that's why I didn't want to bring any of that up. But I'm telling you, but the, the whole root still goes back to he did not have a Christian dad. Mm -hmm. Still does. Because you know what? He was, I hate to, <laughs> I hate to say this, but he was, ah, no, 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 I don't want to say it because I don't want to get into like his Muslim, because I don't want to talk about religion. No, no, no. We'll, but, we'll, we'll save that for the next one though, but that's a good point. But it's know? all about parenting. And, and that's why like, you know, I, I say I sound like an idiot because all of my scientific training and, and, and medical training and everything, whatever. It's all wrong. The bottom line is, and, and again, we could have saved like a whole entire hour. It's like, hey, look, if this guy would have had a Christian dad, he'd be alive today. Mm -hmm. he would. But he doesn't. And it's not like a Christian dad, like, but just the philosophies of yeah. Christianity. Understanding the first commandment. I'm telling you, understand that first commandment was true. You can't do that. That's why you build. That's why you get physical. You compete and things like that. That's, that's self-love. Mm -hmm. That's loving yourself. You know, and this kid obviously didn't. That's why he was so angry because he didn't. Under well, I don't want to get into all those things, but <laughs> sure, sure. parenting. Yeah, that's it's it. parenting. No, well, we'll stop it right there. But thank you guys for tuning into our show today. Hope you guys got something out of this. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Take care.